You're watching Experience Comic Culture and Sales, streaming live daily to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks again for joining us tonight. We've got a jam-packed show uh, as we welcome our special guest, uh, artists of Gargoyles and Thundercats. Uh, Mr. Drew Moss is staying up late with us tonight. And from the latest mass hit, Feral, and uh, artists of Stray Dogs, we have Trish Forstner is back with us as well. And also on the uh, auction boards, uh, hopefully she gets here in time. She's uh, running a little late, but she should be here. The artist of Beauty and Lineage. She's a, a show favorite, uh, Fung Fung. So hopefully she'll be here. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this short intro brief. It's good to see everyone here tonight. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, hello, Kenneth Bird. You're always here early. Good to see you. Uh, do us a favor. Uh, message your friends, your family, and your church buddies, and hit that follow button and help us uh, increase our uh, followers here so we can continue to bring you uh, wonderful co content like Nick Berucci's The Original Art Show that runs every Fridays at 7 p.m. Hey, Mog, how are you doing tonight? I can't, can't hear you. And what are you uh, working on tonight? Can you repeat that one more time? Hey, Derek, good to see you. <clears throat> okay. I'm not sure we're uh, hearing that uh, right, but um, we can always uh, come back to Mog in a bit. Um, <clears throat> let's bring on our uh, special guest tonight. He's been a number one stalker of the show uh, for months now, and so we are glad to finally have him here, uh, Mr. Drew Moss. Hey. hey, Drew. How's it going, buddy? Wonderful. Yes, I stalk you guys. Uh, <laughs> These crazy we deadlines, man. You guys are a respite for me. <laughs> Good to see you, Lorena. Thanks again for uh, joining us. And what are you drawing tonight, uh, Drew? Uh, Chitara, because, you know, I can't get enough of drawing these Thundercats. Um, <clears throat> and uh, your starting bid on that is going to be? I think 75. 75. I think that's there fair. You go. That is very fair in my book. So if you want to bid on that at Chitara, go ahead and place a bid on that. Uh, just say bid Drew Chitara. And uh, for 75, and that will get you in the running there. Now, Drew is also going to be giving away two Thundercats that are signed, the black and oh, white edition funny. and the colored uh, edition. And so if you want to get on that, Put in pound sign EXP Thundercats, okay? There you go. Look at that. Personally signed by Drew, and you didn't have to pay for it. Okay. I haven't signed them yet, but, but yeah, these you know are going to happen. There you go. Look at that. They're foil Boom. covered. Okay. Um, <laughs> issue one, I think they're one of 200 or whatever of 200. Of, okay. And you know, um, back you, is that. All right, that's the is that the foil one? Yeah, they're both foil. Oh, they're oh they're both foil. Yeah. Oh shit. They, did they dynamite made them for me? Oh uh, wow. Okay. Just cons. Um, uh, uh, there was only two hundred of each made. Yeah, I'll get you can see the foil. And then if you oh, look on the back, that's a super duper giveaway that you're doing there. Yeah. No wonder so, your art manager was getting pissed. <laughs> what's that? No wonder your uh, art uh, agent was getting pissed. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't. I love him. He's the best. Uh, but hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm sure he'll text me if he is. Uh, um, yeah, but yeah. No, I love Quan. He's 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 uh, one of my favorite people. I do. He's amazing. Okay. And did you have a special offer that you want to? Um... Uh, put out there too, or were you able to find that? 
special offer. Um, if not, that's okay. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Okay, no worries. Okay, and <clears throat> let's uh, check in with the uh, other artists that we have here, uh, Miss Trish uh, Forstner. Hello, uh, how y'all doing? And, uh, good, good, good to see that you're doing fine. Farrell mm -hmm. is uh, kicking butt. <laughs> it really is. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that people seem to love it, and it is only going to get more crazy. Is only going to be more crazy. That is going to be crazy. I'm going to be interested when we uh, get to C2E2. You're going to be there, right? Yep. To see, I'm just going to be interested just to walk by your spot <laughs> and uh, uh, see the kind of draw that you're going to have there. Oh, uh, and I'll take I'll take a few pictures too. <laughs> I hope I hope it's good. I've never been to Chicago, so oh, really? uh, yeah, I've never been. And um, C2E2, I have a lot of friends in Chicago. They all mm -hmm. message me. They're like, you should come. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> Someday, I guess. You know. Well, well we love, Mog and I love Chicago. Um, it's a nice uh, nice city. You can walk around late at night. We've walked around uh, around midnight um, by the Millennium Park. They've got a lot of great uh, um, events around there that are, that are pretty much free. I have, uh, um, so it's, yeah, my yeah. friend, I have a friend. Well, I think my one friend works at Graham Cracker Comics, which is like Graham, a big. That's a, yeah. That's one of their main stores out in Chicago, Graham Crackers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, and another friend of mine, he he's been following us since um like My Little Pony days, so he's been buying our comics since My Little Pony days, like back in 20, 2014, 2012. Uh -huh. I'm like, heck yeah, come on, buddy. There you go. Yeah. And so now every time he goes to the store and he gets a haul, he has to post a picture of it to us. <laughs> uh, to me and Tony, whether it's Pony or whether it's you know Feral or or Tony's new thing, uh, Uncanny mm -hmm. Valley, um, he's out there always posting something. And and I picked up this cover of Thundercats number one. Oh, hey. I've never it, seen that one. That's awesome, isn't it? Great. Wow. It's I also got the I also got the Virgin one because you know. Nice. Whatever. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I love it. Uh, the artist. Is um, who is the artist? I can't read. Stephen, I, I can't read his name. Stephen, dang, where's his name? I can't even know. Uh, we can't even find those copies around here. This was on a this was on a website that I found by accident, like <laughs> by absolute accident. It was a Facebook ad, and I was like, "Well, there's a 50 50 shot that this is gonna steal all my information." <laughs> <Let's> try. <laughs> So I got this wow. because, you know, I am a massive Thundercats nerd, and um, this one has all my favorites, you know, the classics, even the, Schnarf, yeah. Schnarf Jr. Or Schnarf, so you did know? you, did you, was that something that you watched when uh, around that time? Oh, yeah. As a kid growing up? Oh, absolutely. How about you? We had all the toys and everything. See, yeah, that now that was a cool part about the '80s. That period, man, there was so many cool uh, uh, car cartoons and kids shows. Now, un unfortunately for me, uh, I was already in my uh, early twenties. Uh, I I didn't stay home much on on Saturday or uh, watch as much as I uh, wanted to watch those shows. Um, most of the shows that I did watch were like in the '60s and the '70s, like Birdman, the um, um, Batman, Spider Man, you know that the the older stuff like that, but I was watching all that all that coming out in the, in the eighties, and of course we saw the comics coming out with them too, you know like GI Joe, Transformers, and all that as well. And I go, wow, what a I kept thinking, what a cool time it is to be a kid to have all that and the oh, toys. The toys were great. I'm trying to remember yeah. what it was. If it was the Gem and the Holograms and GI Joe Power Hour thing, or was it? Transformers and Gem and the Holograms. There was like a Gem and the Hologram slash yeah. something else, and it was like yeah. a power hour. Man, that yeah. was my that was alive. I was alive <laughs> then. And yeah, those were my the favorite. Best. We had Voltron and 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 yeah, Voltron. Yeah, uh, that's it. There you go. And it is like Lion Voltron, like the, the mm. you know, yeah. Galaxy <laughs> Rangers and Centurions and yes. yeah, and there was a uh, Shogun as well. Yeah. Or was it Shogun or is it Ray Dean? I Shogun, tried. I think, yeah, I tried to watch Gem and the Holograms again, and oh, oh my don't God. do that! 
I did. I was like, you know what? Let's go down a let's go down a road, right? Because on YouTube, somebody has a playlist of all the Gem and the Hologram songs, and I was vibing. So I went into so I went into just the rabbit hole of watching the episodes back, and man, I could not take it. I made it two episodes and was like, I used to watch this. No way. That's but, the way I like, feel about Motu, the Masters of the Universe. It's, oh. it's a god awful cartoon. Uh, <laughs> You could tell what it was made for then. It was just a like thirty minute long toy commercial. That's yeah. all. It was. And it, you know, even Thundercats was to a degree, but at least there was an overarching story. You know. Yeah, yeah, I felt that way too. But not old, not for Gem and the Hologram fans. Ooh. How old were you? Uh, were you guys then around that time? I think I was ten or nine. Yeah, nine or ten. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, those were the, those were the good days. <clears throat> Came on every day. Now we know too much. So, like, you know, now watching simple things like Gem and the Holograms and or like, you know, even even um, you know, Thundercats and stuff from back in the day, it's just like, oh. Oh yeah. You know, it, we know it, too much, so now we can't enjoy it. <laughs> that's that's that is this that is the sad part. Okay. It's it's like even like even with me with collecting, you know, I was just started collecting comics, right? And then all of a sudden, I find myself, I'm a dealer, a retailer, I get into production, and now I'm managing Bog. I know way too much, and I can't enjoy it as much as I, as I used to. You know, it's, it's uh, a little bit uh, difficult uh, to do that, but we try, you know, we still try. Speaking of Mog, did, <clears throat> did you fix your mic? Is your mic fixed? Oh, no. no. Still? No. Okay. Well, so Mog we is drawing. <laughs> Mog is also drawing Chitara on a VOA card. Oh, so nice. what that, that so what if if you don't know what that is, what that means is that on there is is this label that you can scan, and it'll pull up a video of her uh, where she actually was drawing the card. So oh, that comes as its authenticator. Uh, that that is a, a real card that was. Uh, traditionally drawn oh, that's and, cool. and signed okay so <clears throat> those cards range in price from 75 to 100 starting out okay and they go higher once they get into collector hands so for this one we are going to start it out at 50 dollars. so we're starting at a little bit below give you guys a chance to jump in there and maybe we'll see some kind of a like a bid war or something on it uh so I don't know if Ma can hear me, if you can show that card. <laughs> she should have it right by her. Well, I mean, is that it right there with her hand? Like, uh, no. Brown? No? No, no. She's working on, uh, she's going to be working on another Thundercats out there, I believe. Yeah. So uh, what, what about you, Trish? Are you going to be drawing anything tonight? Uh, I hadn't planned on it. My office is a wreck. Um. Okay. Okay, there's there's the card. Oh, okay. Neat. Okay. Look at that. Oh, awesome. Okay. It's still a work in progress. Um, I told her, you know, don't finish it. I have to because I have to record the last at least like the last two minutes of it. Uh that way it, it will become um part of the uh vid. Nice. Um that's so wild. That gets pulled up. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so that's going on. And I'm getting back to you, Trish. Did you want to draw something? You don't have to, but that's no, what you call. No, but I'm happy to get. I'm happy to give something away. Oh, uh, I've got. I've got my cover for Man's Best here. Okay, there we go. Another right. giveaway there from uh, Trish. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Let me just uh, throw that in here. I'll sign it for whoever you know if, they, if they want me to sign it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this book is really cool. And when they asked me to do it, see, we actually lost the Eisner to <laughs> the writer of this book. And uh -huh. I was like jealous. I was mad jealous at San Diego that year. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm a grown up, so I behaved properly. Um, <laughs> but he asked me to draw this for him and they marketed it as Stray Dogs in Space. And I was like, man, you're just really sticking it to me here on this, aren't you? <laughs> like... <laughs> It was really, uh, it was really funny, but like also probably one of the coolest little books. I, I, so far, I, I love it. I think the story's great. The little characters are great. I love the inking style in it. 
Look at how like mm -hmm. organic the line style is. It's really wow. cool. Looks cool. Yeah. That's what I like about like I love watching other artists draw or other artists create because like I feel like, you know, my style is always so clean and you know, pristine because I like that animation quality look. But like everybody else, man, they get real nice with those lines rough. Or, or like not rough, but like organic <clears throat> feeling, like the line widths are less yeah, controlled and scratchy. Like yeah, Love but it. yeah, but and look at you doing it the old-fashioned way with a brush. Jeez. Yeah, look, I've already spilled ink. Look at that. Boom. It's not. It's yeah. I was gonna say it's not working with real media unless you get some of it on you. That's yeah, right. it's the best. Yeah. Let's, let's see if I can clean my finger off. And uh, we do have a bid on your um, piece already, Drew. From oh, uh, Mike cool. Asbill. So thank you uh, very much for that, Mike. And uh, Steve Vendetta had a question here. If I can. He says, Drew, who do you think could bellow the loudest? Ha, hacksaw, Jim Duggan or Lion O? Oh, the ho, the, the Lion O, the, the cat's call thing. Yeah, man, I'm biased. I think Lionel's got that. Yeah, I was um, gonna say. There you go. Like he, he's also. I don't know. He probably does it more too. Um, he always maybe hats all back in the day. <laughs> he's only done it once in our comic, um, uh, and he won't be doing it for a little bit either. Spoilers. Oh, uh, oh hashtag spoilers. Do we not have these sort of omens? Well, yeah, in the first issue, it breaks. <gasps> Dang. Oh, yeah. I, I see. Look, I bought this book. I did not take it out of the plastic it arrived in. Ninety <laughs> percent of the people I've signed, well over a thousand of those books, and most of those, most people have not read the first issue. Because <laughs> uh, I always so ask, I'm like, "Did you read it?" And they're like, "No." Um, I'm a trade paperback girly, though. Like, I love trade paperbacks. Um, I bought a couple this past weekend. At, when I was at one of my when I was at one of the feral signings, I was like, you know what? Let me just go shopping while I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's um. Let's, let's do this. Okay, they're saying the cover is Stephen Ahola. Ahola? No, I haven't. Um, I'm making a mess. Is what I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> ah, the yeah. real media. Yeah, I love it. Uh, um, it's like a labor of love. Um, I usually do my pencils digitally, though. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, I feel story. you there. Yeah, yeah, I feel you there. We do uh -huh, um, but... our pencils digitally, print them, and then ink traditionally, yes. and then rescan them back in. It's yeah. so much cooler that way. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can make all the corrections and stuff and uh, get it done. Uh, quicker without all that erasing and stuff like that. So it comes yeah, out cleaner you, too. You have to have original art because that that's a whole market, man. Like the uh -huh. original art market is amazing. Oh, yeah. So like to, to mm -hmm. deny yourself that is, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like, like I'm just saying like page rates aren't that great. Oh, uh, EXP, <laughs> yes, that is, that, that's the name. Yeah, my my thing is that you know yeah, you gotta well, milk it uh, like everywhere you can, you know. Yes. So even when we got started with this, I told Mog, okay, uh, you know you can yeah sure you can do this stuff digitally, okay, but you're not gonna make as much, right? But if we we do this, especially since you're you're you know you're not like Adam Hughes or anybody like that, where you can like uh, bring in the the thousands of dollars, you're just kind of like starting out. So show them the original art. You know that you, that you do because you're good at it anyway, and uh, you'll have a chance to uh, sell that. You know you can sell the cover to the publisher and then sell the original art somewhere else. Yeah, the original. Like I used to do everything digitally um, <coughs> just for speed because <laughs> uh, it's just faster. But um, Declan actually convinced me to do Thundercats all traditional. Um, and thank you, Declan. You're the best. Uh, uh, I, I I have seen the light. Like, yeah, it's it the it's original art sales is. I mean, like I said, page rates aren't great. At least not where I am. Um, so it, it is a good source of income. 
Um, but you do one of the one of the I think one of the better shows uh, in the country that um, where artwork I believe does really well, and that's the Heroes Con. Don't yeah, you get good show. rates out there? Yeah, the, the Heroes is all art show. Like I, I've been going there. I've been a guest for I want to say thirteen years. Damn. Um, maybe twelve. I don't know. I I, don't, I really don't <laughs> remember. Uh, yeah. After a certain point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you lose track, but it, it's my favorite show. I do it every year. Um, I I do really well with the art. I mean, I don't even bring prints to that show anymore. I just bring a, my paper and my supplies, yeah. and and I I do fine. Um, no stress of like selling people books or uh, prints or anything like that. Just like seeing familiar faces catching up with everybody and you know selling art um it, it's it's just the best auction on saturday night is yeah. a lot of fun yep. um the friday night drink and draw is a lot of fun mm -hmm. um they have the live art <laughs> stage for everybody to draw and that that's always a lot i don't ever do it to be honest i yeah. can't say it's a lot of fun. i don't ever do it <laughs> and that's how that's how San Diego used to be. Yeah, they used to have like a lot of fun events that were centered around art and, and, and the artists, and they don't they don't have that uh, anymore. And Sheldon uh, has always been a big uh, art uh, collector. So and God, it would be amazing to see the collection that he has of, of uh, artwork. Oh, I can only imagine, man. <laughs> uh, I just know that. Also, Adam Hughes came back this year. And he uh -huh. hasn't been there in like ten years. Yeah. Um, what? So that's kind of a big thing, uh, seeing him at that show again. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone and meeting new people. And I don't know. I, I really plug that show a lot, man. I want. I I like it when it's successful. I mean, not that I'm making it successful. They it's a one of the best cons <laughs> in the country, um, but. Like I just love it so much. Uh. Yeah, I've um, I've never, we've never actually. Marg went there. She kind of shared a table, and it, she didn't do really well there. So I, I told her after that, you know, we got to go back, and I'll be with you. So that way, I'll show you like how how we can work it uh, to uh, to her benefit. So hopefully, uh, they actually sent us the uh, uh, application uh, a couple, last week. So I'm hoping to get the invoice for the table, and then we'll be going. So I would. We'll that's awesome. There. Yeah, I definitely. I'll definitely stop by. Um, uh, it's. I don't know, man. It's. It's. As I don't even live in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I live yeah, in Virginia. You, right. But I feel like that show is like my hometown show. Um, Wait, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, I'm in Virginia. Hey, do you guys get uh, blue crab? Yes. I like it. Dirt cheap. You're in Virginia too, Trish, right? I'm in Baltimore. Oh, can, oh Baltimore, yeah. The, you when she shares what the Chesapeake Bay, right? Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you you have the same stuff. Um yeah. Yeah, we used to go I used to as a kid go out into the creeks and go crabbing with like chicken and string and a net. <laughs> like deep the, in water, you know. Yeah. There's a little um like farm type store um, that used to be before it got mainstream, like the spot to go and get like your beat to go crab fishing or, you know, whatever crabbing. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, there's a bunch of houses on that same road where like you'll, you'll go by on a random Sunday and they'll have signs out, you know, live crabs, you yeah. know, cause they'll just go catch them that day and then sell them in the <laughs> afternoon. Uh, nothing better. Although that's too much mess for me, I have to eat. If I get crabs, I go to a restaurant because that's too much mess for my house. <laughs> I'm a yeah. I'm a pro at eating crab. I can crack that thing and eat it real, real clean. Okay. Yep. And um, I got my training early because I actually lived in Norfolk, Virginia, for about six years, and my oh. dad loved crabs. So we would hit the creeks. Right. This is this was back in the '60s, and um, my we would come back with two. So those steel trash cans, yeah, those yeah. would be full. 
right? And the crabs are as big as your arm. They're not yeah, as they're big huge like that back anymore. In the yeah. So we would fill those two things up in like in a couple of hours and then come back home and, and then call our friends to come and eat. And my, yeah. my dad enjoyed catching them more than he did eating them. He loved eating them, but he enjoyed catching them a whole lot more. I agree. I even remember going out to like Virginia Beach right, and doing like kind of like what you were doing, uh, Drew. You just threw, threw a string with a drumstick, chicken drumstick yes. tied to it. And you feel something biting on the string, and you just kind of reel it in slowly, pull yep. it up, and scoop that crab. You know, yeah, that's exactly what you do. Um, uh -huh. I used to go, I used to hunt conch too, conchs. Oh, my yeah, mom conchs. would make because you know she's Korean, so she'd be like, hey, "Go get me some conchs," and she'd make oh, conchs. She's, yeah, she's gonna love that. <laughs> oh, it was delicious. Mm. That's right. You said your wife was a, a Korean, and no, my wife is Filipino. Oh, she's Filipino. Okay. And my right. mom is Korean. Oh. Okay. Your mom is Korean. Your wife is Filipino. Okay. Yes. Um, do they get along? You know what? They're like best of friends right now. Um, wow. This whole tragedy, like they have, uh, you know, to be honest, at the beginning, not so much. Uh -huh. um, not on not because my wife, like she's always trying. She's a very lovable person. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom, not so much. Uh, <laughs> is it because you're the first son? You're the only. I'm the son? only son. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, she's from Seoul. So. Oh Seoul. Um, uh, yeah, she. Can you speak Korean? I there's a long. I I understand a lot of it. Um, I don't speak it. Uh, I yeah. used to live with my grandparents when I was a child. My mom and I did for a little bit, and uh, she we weren't allowed to speak Korean in the house. Um, so that kind of stunted my whole progress with Korean. It was like I was five. I'm sad to um, say that the only Korean I know I learned from uh, K drama. <laughs> yes, yeah, Trish. Trish, what which K drama did you enjoy watching? Um, recently. Before he went off to military, the um, uh, extraordinary. Uh, Attorney Wu. Oh, that was good. Is it good? Yes, it was nice. fantastic. Nice. Um, nice. And most recently, that. Marry My Husband. Oh, <laughs> was that so about? good. What's Trish, what's the premise? What, of Marry My Husband? Yes. Marry My Husband. <laughs> oh, so uh, no, this Trish, lady, no. I'm sorry, this lady, she, um, she, I guess she has a, she has a husband. The husband's kind of a jerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, her best friend, she catches her best friend with her husband. She's just been diagnosed with a terrible disease and ends <gasps> up dying and going back 10 years into the past. So then uh -huh. she it sets off her like revenge arc to oh. get the best friend and the husband together. So it's that's why it's called Marry My Husband, because she's trying to set her best friend up with her old husband. Oh, that's but in the past, weird. and there's some like twists. There's some like major twists, and I had to like watch like some other follow up stuff because there's a lot of Korean culture. You know, there's a lot of culture yeah. that I'm not like you know 100 percent on, and I wanted to make sure I understood it all. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> that is that is stone cold. Like the the whole premise of it just was really cool. And then she figures out someone else had gone back to. And the only what? reason they know okay, is stop. because stop. I'm gonna watch it, okay? Yeah, you gotta watch it. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't want to know anymore. It's very okay. interesting. It was very interesting <laughs> and very fun. I love how they all like go like even a lot of other K dramas where they have like meetings or there's usually some uh interaction between like old high school like bullies and stuff. Yeah. Like that dynamic is just I know it's a trope. I know it's, it's like trophy. something that yeah that always happens but like mm. it always just seems so funny because i'm like bullies in america are way different <laughs> yeah 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 i'll agree to that um stevie b i don't know if that's a if you're placing your bid or if you're just like reconfirming that so if you can verify that uh for me i think he um, put an opening bid for Mark's goliath 
Yeah, no, I I, I see that. I'm just not for me. I'm just not sure if that's a, a bid or not. So oh, okay. just asking for a confirmation oh, okay. on that. Yeah. Um, okay, Mel would be Patrick Swayze in The Outsiders. Hey, that, I, I'll, I'll go for that. <laughs> and uh, Derek writes, uh, wait, hold the phone. Mog isn't Adam Hughes. You know, she's not, but, uh, you know, she's, she admires Adam Hughes a lot. So yes. if Adam's going to be at um, uh, Heroes Con uh, again this year, she's going to, I'm kind I'm going to have a hard time keeping her down uh, at the table. I'm kind of, I'm probably might have to like tie her down or something like that. No, hey, it was oh, nice oh, meeting oh. you too, Erwin at uh WonderCon. Thank you for uh, dropping by tonight. And uh, Stevie B writes, it took almost 69 minutes into the show before we heard Mog. Mog's first words. I'm not really <laughs> what I'm there comes that 69 in there again. Okay. And Stevie writes that it is a bid on the on the Goliath. Okay. Um, Got that down. Okay. Gracias, All right. So gracias. we're gonna take a little break uh right mm -hmm. now, but when we come back, we'll uh, I see that Fung Fung is in the background. We'll uh, mm -hmm. uh, bring her in and we'll catch up with what everybody is drawing, right? So don't go away, we'll be right back. In a world where you hit like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. That'd be really great. Thanks. To be continued. Three little words that hold the secret to the next great story. Three words that will thrill you, confound you, give life to new possibilities. Every variation of To Be Continued is a promise. A promise of adventure. A promise of excitement. A promise of unseen wonders and unexplored worlds. A promise that every issue you read makes you a part of a never-ending journey. And behind every page, there will be an unopened door waiting for you. This story to be continued at your local comic book shop. Visit ComicShopLocator.com today. Live from New York. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, live from Cleveland? It's Friday night? It's Friday Night Live! With Nancy McCann. And Ricky. And sometimes Carlos. And featuring boxes and boxes of rare comics. Unique collectibles. Lots of smiles and conversations with new friends. Friday Night Live with Comics Unlimited. Friday night from 9 to 11 on The Experience. Join the party. Head over to our link tree to find all the links for everywhere the experience is all the time. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Do us a favor, hit that follow button uh, so we can continue to bring you wonderful content uh, like tonight's show and after this show is friday night live so you can get uh, more comics out of there they've got some pretty uh, good stuff that they're offering tonight so stay tuned for that and um in our background oh. i believe we have fung fung so let's bring her on let's, let's see what yeah. she's been up to she's a show favorite is you know, she that? trish oh she dropped yep. it. okay so we'll bring her out when she We're comes talking back about, i'm sorry now go ahead no, go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, you were talking about, uh, no, actually, it was Mel. We we're talking about Adam Hughes. You know, it made me think. Yeah. Uh, when you guys uh, like someone, right? Do you guys just grow even colder around that person, or do you guys just get more active around that person? Okay. I can't say a word. Whenever I meet somebody that I'm like enthralled by or like, you know, yeah. kind of uh like in awe of their style. Yeah, yeah. 
I stand there like a goon and just. <laughs> like you <laughs> please, right? Do you know who you are? Like, do you know who you are? Yeah. <laughs> I did that to um, at San Diego when I had the fortunate uh, experience of going. Um, I met the guy who designed Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Mm, and yeah. the, the head, the lead animator, Chris Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, like, and I'm just like, you know who you are? I'm just like, I whenever I meet celebrity types or like people who I look up to, I just, mm -hmm. I fall completely quiet. Quiet. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> I freeze off. Like, I'm, uh, I, I try to think of my the questions that I want to ask, and I try to think of uh, a question that's going to be kind of like intelligent. And so when I started going to like San Diego Comic Con, and I was meeting uh, guys that I like, like Charles Vest, Jim Lee, McFarland, oh, you know, all those guys there, right? So I'd always like try to start up a conversation um, if they if there was like not too much people around and you know i'd carry it on so yeah i yeah i i would be star truck star struck but i would fight that fear and just go up to them oh i met hallie atwell at baltimore comic-con and i love her so much just you know in general because agent mm -hmm. carter is like one of my favorite marvel characters mm -hmm. and so um you know meeting her and mm -hmm. she's just the way that she you know she's just as lovely as she seems and I mm -hmm. could not think of a daggone thing. Like, I was standing there. I had questions. Or I mm -hmm. had, you know, thought in my brain that might have been intelligent. Mm -hmm. And nope, it left me as soon as I was standing in front of her. <laughs> Gone. Gone. Yeah. That's, that's me. That's me there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know who else I would get like that with. if it, Unless it was like, you know, an artist or someone that I really, you know, whose artwork I really admired. Like, Gosh, if anybody ever put me in front of Don Bluth, I'd probably faint before I would ask a question. Mm. Like, he's like one of my biggest inspirations. And so, you know, Tony met him at some show last year. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he sent me this picture and he goes, what do you want me to tell him? I'm like, hi? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so lame. It just, just Remember me? <laughs> I did a class with you once. Gosh, yeah. It's so cringe. <clears throat> yeah, it's so scary. I don't know why, but that's how I am. Yep. JD writes he used to work at a radio station, and he's he's met like Kenny G, Brett Michaels, Harry Spears. That's cool. And, wow, Weird Al. Oh, I, I, Trish, I, I, Trish. Yeah. do do you uh are you do you have a husband? Yes. Are you married? Mm -hmm. Right. See, this, so don't you think it's a wonder that like people like you and me. We just freeze and become almost like invisible or something end up even getting a partner like how can we even you can't even talk anymore how can we do that you know no, and, yeah and it's really funny because he'll call it out too like if i'm standing somewhere like for too long and just not saying anything if i yeah. if words don't come out he'll be like you're acting weird again come on let's go mm -hmm. you know or call me out on it <laughs> i'm like great this doesn't make it like even more apparent and then my whole face turns red and you know mm -hmm. uh, drew how is it when somebody comes up to you and they're just like in totally awe? yeah what do you do drew? i'm sitting here doing the same thing you know like drew's doing such a great job over there look at him um mm -hmm. I, i'm There's... not used to it to be honest i i don't take compliments well uh, oh, my really? wife says i need to work on it but um wow i actually on the flip side my my i the my art rep now he's we're we just started working together but he also reps chris bachalo right and chris mm -hmm. bachalo is one of my heroes okay mm -hmm. i got to sit with him well next to him at this last show and uh you know we got to talking and stuff which i did give i did when i first met him i was just like give me five seconds because I got to get myself together real quick. Mm. <laughs> because, like, you're amazing, right? You know? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the weekend, he actually, I drew him a death. And he drew me one. Okay. Um, And I was so nervous. Yeah. The first one I did, I ripped up. Oh, no. <laughs> and he took it. 
and he's <gasps> like, sign it. I'm going to tape it together, and I'm keeping this. Oh, and I did him another so one. Cool. He's so, so cool. amazing. He's so nice. Like, he's I mean, so not sweet. that people, I expected him to be mean, but, mm. like, I don't know. Like, I you have a poster of his from 1992 mm. in my studio uh, that I've had since 1992. Mm. Um, I even told him that. Uh, and, uh, mm. but no, people, when they're nice to me, I don't know, mm. man. They're, they're just nice. And I, I, it, we I do have our dude, just like, yeah. oh, thank you. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know exactly what you mean. Cause like, uh, recently, right. Um, we met like we met John Boy at a con, right? So and then we He's saw nice. him at, a, at another con mm -hmm. after that. And yeah. he actually came up to me mm -hmm. and he gave me a print and one of the comics he did. I'm mm -hmm. going, wow. You know, yeah, he's a nice guy. I didn't even go to so his table or anything, but he just like came up to me and go, Hey, I just you know, I saw you looking at these. I want you to have them. You know, I didn't That's have any extras back then, but I wanted so oh, oh, gosh. Man, I know. was scared of him. You and know, then like, he's, 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 he's telling me that, hey, you yeah. know, I want to have dinner with you guys so you can meet my wife, right? Because mm -hmm. I think you guys are really, really cool. And, it's, you know, when you get that kind of treatment, you know, you just get all kind of like flustered and, and everything. And yeah. you know, you're, you're just His amazed that somebody. It's so interesting, too. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. He's always posting like tutorials and stuff on his Facebook yeah. page. And I'm like, thank you for posting these. I'll be sure to like. Not look at them while I look at your artwork. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, but I saw him. I, I when I was at my signings this weekend, so mm. we did a, we did a couple. We did one in New York, and we did a couple down here. Yeah. And um, some people brought us the Stray Dogs Dog Days cover that he did, Aww. and I'm like, look, <laughs> John Boy's even here in spirit. <laughs> like, mm. he's such a sweet dude. I saw yeah. him at, I, I had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time in San Diego in 21. And he just, you know, I was like, oh, I was digging through because, you know, I'm a dork. So I'm digging through all of his stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, look, it's the Stray Dogs cover. <laughs> like, oh, no, do you want? I'm like, no, man, I got a box of them at home. And he's like, oh, do you want this one too? I, there was a Spider-Man oh, or something that he did that I wanted. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy this. I know. And he's like, no, oh, don't worry about it. Here it goes. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um by the way, fans, just listening to this, don't expect free stuff from John Boy. Please support the artist. Yes, um, right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Please yeah. support. But yeah. he is, uh, if you're afraid, starstruck, starstruck like like me, uh, do not be afraid of John Boy. He <laughs> actually made me feel comfortable. He's like an angel. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> nice guy. Yeah, yeah didn't meet nice. his wife, but I, I saw we did see them at WonderCon. But he was like way too busy for me to approach him because yeah. he just had a, a crowd around him. Um, but mm. yeah, they were, I could tell that they were having a good time. Uh, JD writes, uh, You're more than just a producer here. No, this is from Stevie B. You're like a maitre d' welcoming the chatters as they arrive. Hey, and, and, and to add to that, JD, the crew that we had last week from Laguna last week, um, Fish. Fish Lee said, God, I wish I had a producer like JD doing my talk shows. Yeah, JD is uh, <laughs> as a sweetheart. He's also uh, he, he's also angelic. Um, I'll have to think about more stuff to say, but yeah. And he guides this show. Okay. He mm -hmm. does a lot of work in the background that mm -hmm. you guys don't see. I do a, I do a lot, but he does he does a lot. He he guides me a lot. Yeah. He gave me some good advice this week. Uh, and I'm I'm hoping that I can follow this to the to the best that I that I can. <laughs> so, welcome oh. to the terrible at taking compliments crew there. Okay. So in topic Mark is in that, the same boat. <laughs> topic of that, okay, Trish. Were your parents super critical of you growing up? They called me, they said you can't well okay so my mom has since obviously changed her mind on this but i was always told by you know adults growing up they don't call them starving artists for a reason <laughs> for no yeah. reason yeah. so like you know as as in don't make this your <clears throat> life go you know learn something at school and, and become something you know else oh, ouch. So, like they were really not like into pursuing it at the time because most of the time, like I was drawing like cartoons and you didn't really see a lot of like professional cartoonists outside of like being an yeah. animator at Disney mm -hmm. or whatever, or like, you know, working at mm -hmm. one of those studios in like, 
you know, mm-hmm. overseas or whatever. And so, I mean, that's kind of where my, that's why I wanted to become like an illustrator for like comics and stuff. And yeah. it took me so long to break in. I was, yeah. I, it's not even like I was really close to like giving up. I was just like, you know, Hey, I'm in my forties. Like, you know, I should have done this by now. Like I should have been in by now, you know? Yes. And, so you run into those yeah. same pit, the, the same pitfall, but yeah, no, they weren't supportive at first. Um, but like every adult, like even other artists, like I, I worked at a grocery store when I was a yeah. teenager and you know, this other guy who was also an artist, uh, mm-hmm. but he was a different kind of artist. He like worked in like impressionism, like, or something like that. Like he worked mm-hmm. in a different style of art, like painting, mm-hmm. like actual paintings, beautiful. Mm-hmm. He did a lot of great work. But he looked down on my art so hard, like, <laughs> because I wasn't a serious artist. And I'm like, mm. you know, other artists shouldn't tear down other artists, you know, I because I just feel like that doesn't do anything to help the craft. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not very constructive. Let people let people enjoy things, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. So but, um, yeah, go ahead, Mel. How long ago was that? Well, uh, when I worked at the grocery store, that was when I was a teenager. I'm in my 40s now. Okay, and, right. of course, so, you know. That's like 20 some odd years or so. Yeah. yeah. So, like, gonna... obviously, my mom, you know, she has come around on it since then. But, like, back in the day, she was, <laughs> yeah. you know. You but know. that's that's the, the change in the view uh, mm-hmm. on, on artists uh, these days. Because that was a, a, a common thing. And it still is in, in some places. Uh, like um, when we in in Hawaii, right? When we do the shows there, we you know because it's highly a Asi- uh, big Asian community out there, right? And the parents they want their kids to succeed, and they want them to be a doctor, lawyer, that kind of thing. Okay, uh-huh. and it, that's still kind of prevalent. They don't understand that uh, you can act depending on you know, where you go, um, you can actually make really a good living off of being an artist. But however, when we go to another part, another island uh, in Hawaii, to the big island, the attitude there is totally different. They're very supportive of their kids if they want to go into art. And it was kind of like refreshing when we did the shows there and we asked the kids, well, what do you want to be? Well, I want to be an artist. It's, oh, okay. Is, is your mom and dad, uh, how do they feel about us? Oh, they love it. They, they encourage me. They, they buy supplies for me. Whereas awesome. in the other parts, we, we ask them when we when they tell us they want to be an artist, they tell us, yeah, I want to be an artist, but my mom and dad don't want me to pursue that. They want me to do something else. Oh, mm-hmm. what is it? Oh, doctor, lawyer, you know. So, but it it's kind of it is kind of changing. You you know, twenty some odd years ago, we didn't really have courses in the colleges that you could take that will help you uh, pursue a career uh, a, as an artist. Not so. Uh, whereas now we have so much, uh-huh. uh, there's even like trade schools that you can uh, go to uh, for that. Um, but at the same time, it's um, it's kind of a discussion that Mog and I have had several times. Uh, to be an artist, do you think it would suit better to be professionally trained, going to school and all that, or to learn it on your own? I think that what art school can offer people maybe would be like to learn the business of art like that that part i wish i knew you know before diving headfirst into it um like creating is different and art is subjective as you know like you know what 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 i might like you might not like and vice versa so Mm -hmm. like i feel like creating art there's no wrong way to do it but like you know, selling your art, valuing That's, your time. Right. Like those things are things that I wish that I had learned way early on. Cause a lot of people like tell me that I don't charge enough or like a lot of people say, you mm-hmm. know, well, you know, like you're not valuing your time here. You're giving too much stuff away, stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So I just as soon sit on my hands and, you know, let Tony yeah. steer the bus. Cause I'm like, you've been in this longer than me. I'll follow your lead. You know, yeah. um, but like, and people will take advantage, but like, I like to think that there's a lot more good people in comics than there are <laughs> bad, 
you know. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, definitely good and bad, mm -hmm. but we hope that there's more good. Interesting. Yeah. How about I'll, you, Drew? Are you uh, professionally trained? Um, I went to school for art, but I fought my teachers on everything. <laughs> um, you which rebel, you. Me. Don't teach me how to create. I know how to do it. Well, <laughs> you know, the thing was is. Like as I got older, I realized that they were just trying to make me better. Yeah. Um, by you know, uh, like sculpture lends to your art, photography lends to your art, uh, mm -hmm. everything, painting, um, everything you do helps your art. Like as in, if you do line work, but then if you study photography, you'll learn a lot about composition and right. value. Right. If you do sculpture, you <clears throat> actually start feeling the way the shapes work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, painting will teach you patience. It also teach you how to create texture and light. Like mm -hmm. these things I fought because I was like, I want to draw comic books. Um, mm -hmm. But as I got older, you know, uh, I committed myself to the craft. Um, yeah. It was actually Bob Shrek. I did a portfolio review with him, like, I want to say 14, 15 oh. years ago. Uh -huh. um, and he asked me, the first question he asked me was, what do you do? Or what are you? And I went, well, I'm an IT network engineer. And he goes, no, that's what you do to make money. Like, what are you? Yeah. Are you an artist? Because you should just say it. You're an artist. And then start wow. living your life as an artist. Like carry a sketchbook. Learn from everybody and everything. What you do to make money isn't necessarily who you are. Like wow. be yourself. And that changed my life. Uh, four years later, I was working full-time freelance illustrator and I've been a full-time freelance illustrator for the past 11 years. So like he, click, he flipped a switch in my brain um, and I became like this sponge. Like I would ask everyone everything. Some people didn't like it. Um, some people were very like, I would say 95% of people in comics I've met have been beautiful, wonderful people. There are that 5%. I mean, I've had some really bullying moments. Yeah. And I'm a little guy. I'm like 6'1". <laughs> I'm a pretty big guy. But still, oh. they bullied me like I was a child. And mm. I, I succumbed to that um, because yeah. of my, my – I had no confidence in my ability or who I was. Um, like, I learned from everything. Um, mm. Like, uh, so – I think school is great if you have the opportunity young. Um, you'll network, you learn the business, you'll learn things you don't want to learn, but you'll <clears> find <throat> out that will help you with what you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then you might actually find out what you want to do isn't what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you might mm -hmm. want to do something else. But as you get older, like you can kind of steer your own ship and save yourself the $100,000. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, commit yourself to the craft and read mm -hmm. and ask people your betters. <clears throat> like every, everybody, to my mind, I can learn from. Like they are my betters. Whether you think you are or you're not, mm -hmm. I get insight from everyone. Um, so like, I've had people go, yeah, I've given them my art and say, what do you think? And they're like, what do you want me to say? I said, I want you to tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say something that I wasn't aware of or thought about. And, and I'll go, man, that was, that was awesome. Like I just learned something and, you know, even though they think I'm BSing, I'm not like, I really did learn. Those something. types of experiences are like so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I wish that I had had, like, the mentor when I was in high school. Oh, yeah, that know? would have been great. Because, uh, you know, I when I got out of high school, and, you know, being new to, like, the internet and things like that, uh, as those things were starting to develop, um, it I mean, it still took a long time before I started, like, really branching out. And finally, 
you know, because I was interested in animation, and I didn't, I wasn't just interested in like <clears throat> CG animation, like with like the Toy Story type animation. Mm. I don't want to get on that rant. Um, <laughs> I was interested in 2D hand drawn traditional animation. I wanted to learn how to do it. Yes. And I still, it took me a ridiculously embarrassingly long time but i learned how to make a walk cycle that was like the thing that i had set for myself like a goal so mm -hmm. but what i did was i signed up for a mentorship class with mm -hmm. dom bluth he was doing like an online training wow. thing okay. mm -hmm. like back That's in the weird. early days of him yeah. doing yeah. this because now he does like a whole class that he does at his um campus on uh, in arizona mm -hmm. and i'm like Oh, that's hashtag goals. But, yeah. um, you know, that's amazing. But he said nice things about my character design work. And that was what turned me around. That that was what made me think, oh, yeah, I could totally do this now. Someone I respect so highly <clears throat> said nice things about a character I designed. Hell yes. Mm. Move it on. Let's go. You know, and so then I started to really actively focus more on character designs, expressions you know, pushing it a little bit further, make them look like they feel something, make them look like they can move, you know, that sort of uh, changed mm -hmm. my, how I looked at my own work. Yeah. Um, so we all kind of always have that like little aha moment that like lets us go, oh, I can totally do this now, you know? Yeah, yeah. and it happens all the time. Like right. you never stop having those moments, you know? When little kids come up to me and tell me stuff, <laughs> they tell me like my book got them into comics, or they tell me like, uh, oh, I know, love that. I oh love my that. god, I like, I almost start crying every time. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> I had it, yeah. Um, come to something. me ten years ago or eleven years ago. Hmm. Just walked up to my table and just started quoting stuff from a comic I did, and I didn't oh. even know what he was talking about. And then he clicked, <laughs> and I heard a line. That I remembered, and I was like, "That's from my book." And he mm. goes, "Yeah, well, eight years later, I was drawing at Heroes <clears throat> Con, and this mm. kid, this, this eighteen-year-old kid, comes up, and he mm. starts quoting stuff from that book. This is the same mm. kid, and he goes, I started reading comics with your comic, um, <laughs> and buy all your comics.' I just told, I did the same thing. I was like, "Take anything you want, just take it." Like. Take everything. <laughs> my shirt. Take everything. Yeah, just take it. I don't <laughs> you care. You want my wife? You can take my wife. <laughs> I'll let you borrow her for a little bit. <laughs> you know. Yeah, the, the, it is amazing. Like when when that happens, because yeah, Mark has had the same experience too. We right? did a Puerto Rico Comic Con. It was like 2017 or something like that, and the girl was 13 at the time, and then she contacted us only like a couple years ago. And she said, hey, I just found you here on Facebook, and I was wondering if you re remember me. I was this uh, girl I wanted. She, we, we had, like, these ash cans uh, back then, right? And we were selling them. And she wanted one, but she didn't have any money, okay? Oh. And we could tell that she wanted one really badly. So I just gave it to her and took a picture uh, uh, with Mog, with her holding up that ash can. And so she came back to tell us that she's a... Uh, trying to be an artist now That's amazing. because because of that and because of Mog's work, you know. So, yeah, it, it gets really touchy when you hear stuff like I that. I just think like you set some child off on a path, you know. Path you impacted somebody. Yeah, yeah exactly. You impacted mm -hmm. someone, maybe positively. Maybe they take over the world. Maybe they, you know, just draw some yeah. cool pictures, you know, one day. Yeah. And you know, it's just so awesome. It's just such a cool feeling. I like. Where were we? We were at All Yet yeah Comics last weekend, and the man was standing there with his daughter, and he goes, "See, there's a successful woman in comics." And yeah. I was like, "Who? Where? <laughs> me? <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> Are you talking to me?" <laughs> it was you. It, yeah. It was mm -hmm. so cool. Like I love stuff like that. People are it, so cool. Like, internally, like your shock, like <gasps> your eyes are like, huh? Yeah, the little girl's just standing there, just like hiding kind of behind him because you know how dads are. They got to call him out. Gotta call yeah, sometimes out. Go with those dads. 
So aggressive. All right. Um, we're going to have to take a break, but let's go around oh, the room and see what sorry. you guys uh, got. Um, Mark, let's, see that. let's see that. Let's see that. Okay, there's a. Beautiful. Oh, look at those eyes. <laughs> Woo. And that, that does have a bit of 75, so we are looking for the next bit on that. Okay, so put that in. All right, and then uh, let's see that VOA card mug. My God, mugs over here doing magic. And uh, yeah. that one, uh, we are still uh, looking for an opening bid of fifty dollars on that. It's work in progress. This okay. is just in between. Uh, it won't get finished during this show, but it'll, it'll oh, get the, finished uh, after. I think this is the like a barcode. If you put the phone over, this is where you start seeing the video, like a hologram type almost. Yeah, so oh, you'll see the oh, actual. That is so rad. Yeah, so you'll see it the is, uh, right? mod drawing that card. Yeah, they, they yeah. scan that. That's and behind, each card is like serialized with a number, like a number. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like it would be like like encapsulated, like if you were grading it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is. Yeah, it in is. a way, in a way, it's. Yeah, in a way, it gets treated like that. Um, but it but just authenticates yeah, it. It shows you, like, an, here's the artist actually making it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is for real. <laughs> yeah, it's for real. It's for yeah, Mog. Legit. And, yeah. This is, this is her drawing it. Like, okay, and wow, we do have a bid on the Gargoyles Giant for 50 I believe, from uh, Stevie B. Lying. So we are looking for the next bid on that. Or nothing. You just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Just card No, you're a magician. Trish, what the heck? Are you high? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is late though. I am a little delirious. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Ilya, for uh, coming on tonight. Derek, nice yeah, to see you. Work. Yeah, I'm wearing the Mountain Dew shirt, uh, Derek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually hot here today, 82 oh, degrees. Right so thank this is the first you. time I've worn shorts since the uh, winter season uh, began, and I'm freaking happy about it too. Because mm -hmm. uh, these are this my comfort clothes. I don't really. Okay. Like wearing like a lot of clothes, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, anyway, that's what we got going on. Don't forget to put in pound sign EXP Thundercats and mm -hmm. qualify you for the uh, free drawings uh, that we'll be doing later on tonight. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Twitch, it's not just what happens when you have too many energy drinks anymore. Check out our content over there, too. According to a statistic that I just made up, people spend four hours a day changing the television channel. People who watch the experience don't do that. Save yourself a ton of time by tuning into the experience and enjoying our new original programming seven days a week. And then tell your friends. Think about the money they could save on batteries in the remote alone just by tuning into the experience. Find out more by scanning the QR code below. By this time in our journey, we had been on the trail of a very elusive creature for about 96 hours. But all the hard work is about to pay off. Oh, crikey, there she is. Oh, by the markings, I'd say this one's at least a 9.8. Oh, she's a real beauty. A true mint copy. Oh, this one will make a fine slab on anyone's display wall. Oh, she's a feisty one, though. Look, oh, look out, look out. Mint Hunter Comics is the place to find that mint comic you've been searching for. Mint Hunter Comics, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, part of the experience. And we're back. Maybe. Oh, that was gone. Party! <laughs> yeah, it's party time. Party time. Uh, so, Drew, you know, for you, 
So I guess like um, your wife was like childhood, was it high school sweetheart? No, I actually dated her cousin um, okay. in high school. <laughs> uh, she was cousin? young. Uh, she you married was... his cousin. No. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, and we met that way. She was actually dating one of my close friends. And then huh? she's three years younger than me. So I graduated, mm -hmm. um, did my thing, and then like, I want to say three years, two, three years later, maybe four, um, we met up again. I think when I was 23. Yeah. Um, we started dating and we've been together since. Uh, so 24 years married this year. So yeah, we have two kids, a 20 year old and a 12 year old. Um, yeah, my 20 year old's graduating college in May. So, um, yeah, we've been together a long time and I'm, I'm still like head over heels for her. So, um, Aww. I'm very lucky. Uh, oh, is she right there next to you? Is that why you're saying this? Oh, no, she's asleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. I always met like, she, she makes me laugh so much. Um, and I love it. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, she knows me and I know her and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't be happier. That's so interesting. <laughs> Cause me and Mel, we've been together for now. We're going almost 19, but let's just say 18 years. Right. Okay. Yeah, I kinda, we still I don't know each other, but we, but, but we work well. <laughs> we still don't even know each other. Right. Uh, but what do you mean you work well? Like, because then, like, it, um, it's like uh, easy. I think, I think what your wife has is like a similarities. There's a lot of similarities. Okay. But with me and Mel, we're like living in a parallel world sometimes, and most of the time. But I don't know why we just love each other. It's weird. <laughs> it, what about like it's not a. It's like a oh, I don't know why we do. We just do. <laughs> I mean, I, I look forward to seeing her every day. So. Um, yeah, because usually I'm wrong. asleep when she goes to work, so yeah, um, that's the same, but it's a yeah, different that's, feel. It's kind of like where Mog and I are at this stage, uh, in our lives is that every morning when we wake up, we we the, one of the first things we do is greet each other. Well, actually, I get up earlier than she does, so sometimes I'll go in and kind of like wake her up and say, Hey, good morning, you know, and you know, all that kind of stuff, or she'll come out, um. And then uh, greet me as well. So hmm. that's like one of the first things that we do in the, in the morning. Interesting. What about you, Trish? Is it like me? Like you guys are oil and water, but somehow you guys work? Mm. Yeah, I'd or say that. Working? Well, I mean, like mm -hmm. comics, this, in, comics and illustration and stuff isn't necessarily his thing. He's into cars mm -hmm. and stuff. So I mean, like we have mm -hmm. like two separate kind of jams. Uh -huh. I guess a uh, hobby or special interest wise. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like, I learned a lot about cars involuntarily at first. Oh, like, <laughs> like vehicle cars. Yeah. Like actual cars, like, uh, you know, building them and classic cars and stuff. Oh, God. Uh, we have a, we have a 70 El Camino an 84 Chevy truck an 85 Monte Carlo SS. Dang. Oh, God, Monte Carlo so cool. is mine. The Monte Carlo yeah. is mine. And I, that was the dirtiest I had ever been in my entire life, building that thing. You because built it? Was, yeah. Uh, it had, when we got it, it, we got it used, and it was a pile of junk. Mm -hmm. um, it had a big block Pontiac motor shoved into it sideways. We have no idea how this thing was operational. But it was a Frankenstein monster, okay. and we had to get this giant motor out. It was the hardest I'd ever worked in my entire life, physical labor wise. What, wow. what possessed you to build it? Hmm? What possessed you to go for it? Oh, just because, you know, like the Monte Carlo was kind of like the artist in me. Like, I love that car just because it had, like, if for the time for it being a boxy kind of looking vehicle, it Very had these lines that were just so perfect, so artistic. <laughs> Monte Carlo, you know, car of Maryland. 
Plus the name alone, it just made it sound really classy, you know, yeah. the Monte Carlo. And I've you know? had Monte Carlos. Like, I've had four generations of Monte Carlo in my life. Oh, okay. um, so I had an 85, I had a 91 or 93, something like that, a 2002, and then a 2006. They were all different body styles. Mm -hmm. They were all yeah. fantastic. I had the yeah. 2006, the longest, uh, at 18 years, and then I got rid of it for a 24 Chevy Blazer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I could drive to shows. <clears throat> You know, right now, I have a, a Scion XB that's 18 years old, oh, but it still runs good. Yeah. You know? See, my mommy, she was starting to slip. Uh, like, you know, the AC wasn't working, and I'm like, you can't have that in Maryland. Sometimes the humidity here <laughs> yeah. just gets, you know, out of control, and that black yeah. leather was not not fun. Uh, but, oh, God, know. I love watching uh, those shows on Netflix where they fix these uh, retro cars up and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I watched a lot of those shows back. I mean, I I still, you know, he'll watch he'll watch one uh, that comes on like Motor Trend or whatever, and and mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Um, automatic, Steve. I don't know how to dance. <laughs> the, <laughs> the 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 manual trans is not my jam. But uh, we have this El Camino that my husband has had longer than we've been together. So I'm pretty sure that you know if. If the choice came down to me or the El Camino, I'm pretty sure I'd be the one over the edge. Like this El Camino wow. is like the star. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that one has been built from the ground up, like from the ground up. Take a car, take the mm -hmm. body off, take every moving part, take every bolt off, refinished. Like wow. Rebuilt. Wow. The Monte Carlo, the, the 85 was not like that. Just the engine and the transmission and stuff. That was all replaced. The interior was re replaced. And then the outside was sanded and painted. But it was like... Did you built. replace the engine? Yeah. In the middle? Yeah, what did you put yeah. in it? Um, it's just a small block Chevy. Small block, um, okay. Yeah, like something something that I could manage to drive. Not It didn't have to win races. It just needed to <laughs> you know get me from A to B. <laughs> But it was um it was pretty it was pretty good. Um that car doesn't really necessarily leave the house too often because you know I'm afraid of people. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, do mean, what do you mean afraid? Why? Oh, just because uh, you know, people are reckless and they'll oh, crash into it. Okay. I was taking it to a show one time and somebody leaned out their window and threw a full can of soda out their window that hit my windshield. Oh and no, no, no. I have never raged out behind the wheel before, but I really wanted to like at that, at that moment. And then I was like, Nope, we're just not going to bring her out here on the <laughs> New Jersey turnpike ever again. Is there, there's still, there's still a good demand for those El Caminos. Um, I, well, they don't necessarily exist in junkyards anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, because they're so, you know, been gone for so long yeah, they, and uh, the parts uh, uh, for uh, them uh, are, expensive so yeah yeah i know yeah because uh, people were like rebuilding those as, as much as, as they can to bring those in oh i love el caminos so, man do you want a car do you want a truck oh no yes is. please i want them both so <laughs> yeah it, it, it's kind of like the woodies you know back then you know uh because oh, people classic. were were you you know doing all kinds of stuff with them uh, those are good for the uh, beach uh, scene as well you know for the surfers yeah uh, just like the woodies uh, were becoming popular uh, that, that art that art there's an art style to you know there's an art style in cars uh mm -hmm. reflective of the era in which they were built so like you know you had the 70s you had the 60s yeah. where yeah. i mean a lot of the cars had really nice lines a lot mm -hmm. of you know artistic vision the i'll tell you what fascinates me the most pinstripers pinstripers <sighs> fascinate me it's an art form wherein you know somebody with a very steady hand will actually physically paint yeah the I, don't, line. I don't know i don't know how they do that oh, so i don't cool. they have to do it on both sides because it's got to be symmetrical yeah they don't think as much crazy. coffee as we do though i but if you want to watch some satisfying video look up some video of people doing pinstriping it is amazing insane yeah it I've, I've seen it <laughs> i've seen it so like as i'm sitting here watching you paint and and mystified by your abilities same thing with uh, Drew, how he's down there just, you know, penciling away, you know, working, holding his pencil the way, like, you know, a drafter would. Um, mm -hmm. 
I watch people who paint like pinstripes, and I'm just like, I just sit there. Oh, how? Magicians. It, it's fine when they're going straight, but when they start like curving it and, and oh. doing those uh, uh, arches and points and, oh, you know. Or, or flames, like hand painted yeah. flames yeah. from like the 50s and the, and, and the 60s era of mm -hmm. hot rotting. Yeah. Beautiful. Stellar. Yeah. Hmm. I've always that wanted was, a car with like hand painted flames. Yeah. Yeah. I totally derailed our art show. <laughs> <laughs> the cars. <laughs> <laughs> we steered headlong into cars. Yeah, but same yeah. thing. You're right, JD. Same thing with the airbrush artists. Uh, some of the things they do when they do it without stencil, that is incredible, right? But okay. you, you'll see some guys there's, you know, they're still, you know, even just to, uh, do a palm tree that they have that like stenciled out. But then there's the guys that uh, kind of like freehand it. Um, and those, they do some incredible work, especially the stuff that was coming out in the late 70s and the 80s when the airbrush came out. And that was like stunning where you see like people doing like Frazetta pieces on the vans and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I, that, that's, that again, another whole like genre of art, like yeah. van paintings, <laughs> epic van paintings. Like where I, I'm a van. That was cool. Yeah, it was like uh, you know, it was always some crazy person, some kook in the neighborhood who had like a big van, and it always had like some wizard painting on the side. And you're just like, I don't know you, dude, but I know there's drugs involved in this discussion. So let's you know, <laughs> let's let's talk yeah. about this giant wizard you have on the side of your. <laughs> and it's never like you know. Oh, I'm just, a, I love really Dungeons and Dragons. No, it's like, you know, wizards are really cool, you know, and it's usually some dude who's stoned out of his head, but, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wizards are cool. Mm -hmm. oh, they are. <laughs> wizards are cool, man. They are um, very cool. Interesting. But I, I think the most epic one of those I ever saw, like, it was just like a massive mountainside, and somebody had, like, airbrushed, like, different, like, characters over time. It was like, um, like different 80s cartoon characters mm -hmm. and stuff like embedded into the side of this little mountain on the yeah. side of this van. <laughs> like, I don't know what possesses people, but please keep doing it. More. We want, we want to like see more like that. Art. It's like a lost art. Oh, and tattoo artists. That's another, that's another that's genre. Another that's another whole, yeah. like to physically put something on someone's body that like, you know, it had, and you know, you get one shot. You get one shot at that. <laughs> if you, oh, you got to deal you with smells too when you tattoo. Like people, not everybody smells great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was actually imagining that. I was like, yeah, one day, uh, I think it was two days ago. I was hugging Mel. We were both watching TV, and my nose was near his armpit, right? And then it made me think, like, oh my gosh. How do tattoo artists smell, handle all the smells of um like somebody's ribs, your tattoo ribs and their oh. arms up. Oh. Or like a thigh or like a thigh oh. tattoo. Mm. Or the back, especially <laughs> the lower you, back. And this is my question. You know, some guys are really sweaty, you know? Oh my god. They do a sweaty skin, like and they I mean, forget the smell. <laughs> sweaty skin. What do you do? <laughs> Gross. Dude, Take a right. constant bath. Uh, I need to grab my my paper here and draw a snarf because like nobody else is drawing snarf. I'll draw right, snarf. Here you go. Snarf Trish is uh, a snarf. Yeah, I've got to just actually find you know, get you. my yay. Get my you know, gro yeah. growing like up as a kid. I watched uh, the gargoyles, the animation <clears throat> and Thundercats. But I remember even as a kid, like this guy, this man here. Um. Like, hey, wow. You know what? Um, sorry to break, but God, there's a. I'm I'm having a, such a good time on this show, um, and I'm forgetting some things. Fung Fung is is she still there in the back of the studio? I think she's bring just, her on. Uh, she, no, she did not uh, join again after that first time where she joined and dropped mm -hmm. out. Aww. Okay, all right, all right. She's she's probably having like some technical difficulties. All right. So the other thing is that. Um, we had some canvases that we wanted to show. This was uh, something that Mog and I uh, were getting into. So uh, we're going to offer these to you guys a little bit. You don't, uh, JD has it. 
you can bring those up uh, one at a time. And this is the, uh, what do you call this piece? The uh, Star Wars Justice League piece. And uh, the prices are running underneath. So if you want any oh, cool. of those, you can claim them. And the sizes are down and, there as well. And do you have to shade them? Or do you ask them to shade themselves? Okay. Next one, JD. Okay. Sorry. This is, um, there's a lot of things that are going on here, but this is Darth. Um, Kreia. Darth, Darth Star Kreia, Wars. Uh, in a Shogun yeah. Shaman piece. She's and an awesome character. By 18 at 200. This is a Harley Quinn piece. Same price for that. And the next one in a <laughs> Grogu, who just met his friend there. He's pondering whether or not to eat that frog. Exactly. <gasps> you understood my message. <laughs> and this is uh, this is actually Danny Moonstar, in a kind of samurai Indian mashup. And that's uh, an 11 by 14 for 125. And this is an 8 by 10 of uh, Shogun Mall for 100. So if any of you guys want that, just say so in the comments and just claim it. That's all yours there. Okay. All right. So you can go ahead and continue on. Uh, where did we leave off at here? You have to shave them. You have oh. to shave <laughs> <Frog laughs> me? me as an artist? I have to shave you? Yes. No. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, no. That's, no, a, discuss that's a discussion. Like, no. I'd be like, no, nah, you got to prep yourself. Exactly. And they do go, it go really fast. You can show right. that first one again, JD. Go uh, have yourself a little for that. Okay. Yeah, and Ilya says he's going to be coming out here in uh, California. So let us know. And we'll see if we can round up some people and meet you, Ilya. And there's that piece again. Okay. If there's anything else you guys want to see, just go ahead and say so, and we'll bring that up. Okay, and Drew, are you drawing something else there? You, yeah, I'm just, like, doodling. <laughs> I'm just okay. doodling. I'm just doodling. Is that Yep. Doodling. Just doodling. Okay. Doodling. His uh, Chitara already has a bid of 75, and Mog's uh, uh, Giant Galat has a bid of 50, so we're looking for the next bid on that. And we are also still looking for a bid on the VOA Chitara card that uh, Mog is uh, working huh? on. We can sell this? So what? We can sell this? Yeah. Do we have to give it back to the VOA guys? No, no. Oh. Okay. No. They, he gave those uh, to us for uh, doing some stuff. So those are ours. So cool. <clears throat> and At the very go. beginnings of, yeah. a, of a snarf. Oh. Okay, awesome. Uh, Mel. Yeah. Uh, I think someone said, I forgot who it was, but mm -hmm. they said this. I'm actually painting you. When you're angry. yeah, when yeah, I, I saw that comment. Yeah. <laughs> these guys, these guys just know? like to razz on me every night. No, but how do they know? This is <laughs> how do they know? What do you mean? <laughs> That's what you did? No, this, no, this is you. You know, you get like that. That's like in the morning before coffee. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't get grouchy. Oh, he gets uh, Trisha. He gets hangry. Oh, hangry. He doesn't get. <laughs> Yeah. Gotta have my food. Yeah. Asked the boy writes, didn't Mark do an Egyptian book a while back? If so, anything from that available? That was um the tarot. Well, card. there's actually two of them. So Ruxy and Vamp no Ruxy Vampire, which is uh on Indiegogo right now. Wait, is that Egyptian? No, no, nothing. Okay, I'm sorry, just one. Spectrus and Sabanian. Okay, so the I think the link came up on, on there earlier. She's getting ready to do to well, they're getting ready to launch uh, issue five for that. So mm -hmm. she came on with issue two. So she did two, three, four, and now five. And then they went back to reprint number one and they asked her to do a cover for that. So now you have a chance to get there. There's the link right there. So now you have a chance to get all those Egyptian tarot card covers uh, by Mog uh, for the whole series. Right, so look for that because we're also going to be putting up uh, some uh, more original art uh, for mm -hmm. that campaign. Uh, and the well. more you support us and Kurt, I can continue the next uh, 
project next as a interior yeah, artist. Next, project, next series uh, for that. And a uh, cover artist and create more tarot cards. So. Yeah, I don't know, man. Your uh, contribution, even support, like, share, follow. It means a lot to us. And please follow a uh, wonderful guest, Trish Forst Forstner. Forstner and yeah. <laughs> Andrew Moss. Yeah. And um, if you can put up your links again, Trish and Drew, in the private chat, and then we can oh, go yeah. ahead and share that with the uh, uh, everybody that's here. And that is looking good. Okay, and then once again, uh, there is a bid on the uh, Goliath that Mog is working on for 50, and that was by Stevie B. Mike Asbill has a bid on the Chitara from uh, Drew Moss at 75. Mm -hmm. please, please get you, I mean, this is once in a lifetime chance getting a tri, chi, Chitra. Chitara. Chi, Chitara, sorry. Chitara from mm -hmm. the artist. Those those glowing eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never. I could never understand it. Are they really anthropomorphic? Morphic. Anthropomorphic. Morphic. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they because are. Because they only had yeah. the ears. Well, I mean, um, back then, anthropomorphic, like they didn't. They really weren't like full animals. I guess mm. it was more like, you know, because now when you see anthropomorphic, I mean. Goodness sakes, they could be anything. Yeah, you know, mm. it's and, changed and at any level of transformation. They're or almost whatever. like people, but not quite. Didn't they you do know? like a, another version of Thundercats? Like it was an anime. Like oh, it was really good in 2011. Yeah, yeah right. I liked that it. one was really good. I wish they had given that more time. Yeah, it didn't. If they had called it Space Cats. With swords, it would have done better than if they called it Thundercats. The problem was, is that it wasn't really, it didn't feel like Thundercats. It just felt like Ooh. cool stories with other characters. Um, I think Warner Brothers, they told us uh, when I was doing the designs for the new Thundercats mm. uh, that they wanted like to not stray too far from the OG like designs they felt like that was the problem <laughs> with the 2011 i could series. see that i could see that though the how did you end up getting like, uh, my thundercats you know yeah yeah how did you end up getting on uh, thundercats drew um my editor is the editor for thundercats and i was doing dark ages and i've worked with nate cosby that's his name um for the past five or six years Love nate. Um, and I was, he emailed me one Friday night and I was working on the last issue of Dark Ages. It was like in October. And he said, uh, have you ever drawn any Thundercats? And I was like, yeah, of course I have. <laughs> and he's like, well, send me some of those. And uh, I was like, why? He's like, no, it's no big deal. Just send me some. <laughs> no, reason, no reason, says an editor. Yeah, so... <laughs> I looked through everything, and apparently I've never drawn a Thundercat ever. Uh, so, yeah. so you super quick had to put something together, huh? Yeah, well, yeah. and then I no, told no them. To, hey, no to everyone out there. If they ask you, have you ever drawn it? Just say yes. you did or not, you say yes. Oh, um, shit. So I'm, I, I'm doomed. Them, like, I can't find anything, uh, but I can do something. And he's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, it's fine. So that right after I... I talked to him. Mm -hmm. um, I sketched up a lino. Mm -hmm. I sent it to oh, him. Lino. And then he didn't say anything. <laughs> then I sent a panthero. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then the next panthero. day I did Tigra and Mumra. No response. <gasps> uh, so I was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. uh, but then Monday morning, he messaged me and he goes, hey, man, I can officially offer you um, Thundercats. I was like, how are you doing Thundercats? That's a Warner Brothers thing. And he's like, well, Dynamite's worked a deal with Warner Brothers, but, uh, you know, you got the job. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And he's like, well, you know why you got the job? And I was like, why? He's like, you were just so enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> sending yeah. drawings. Yeah, um, that's what I was gonna say. It was because you kept on sending the next and the next and the next. That's why. Yeah, yeah. and they, and you know, I don't know. It's it's been amazing to be honest. That's how you love that hustle. That editors love that hustle culture. You yeah. know, yeah. um, that's how I stayed on um like My Little Pony for so long. And the, I mean, they yeah. were my first interiors. They gave me the first shot at it. So oh, let's hear your hustle story. Tell me. My oh my my pony my, story. My pony, yes. Oh okay. Well, I've been draw. Obviously, I draw cartoons a long time. But in Baltimore, we used to have a convention called BronyCon, and BronyCon. yeah, BronyCon for oh. the male fans of My Little Pony. They were called Bronies. Mm -hmm. Get it, Bronies? <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, say what you will about those guys. They know how to party. Um. And it's actually quite fun. But anyway, I was on their design team. So, like, mm -hmm. as an artist, I contributed to the look and, like, the designing of the convention and blah, blah, blah. So, mm -hmm. they um, – I was on that convention for seven years. We had upwards of 10, wow. 12,000 people come every year, you know, for a while. And until the end – it ended in 2019, um, right, before, right before the big COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so – they would have the voice actors from the show come like they would have we'd have special guests the comic book artists and stuff would come and that's when i met tony at you know at the show because i was a fan of the comics andy price one of my favorite artists um katie cook was the writer um you know they started the my little pony comic that comic went for 11 years that's unheard of for a kid's comic you know yeah. for one yeah. for one meant for children Yes. And it had mm -hmm. some amazing arcs. So yeah. um, it went for like 11 years or something. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, they gave me my first shot because I had drawn a piece call, uh, that I called, you know, Twy and the Rain Booms, which was My Little Pony crossed with um, uh, Gem and Holograms. So basically I designed Gem ponies. And uh, my friend, uh, Sarah Richards, saw it. And I was like, yeah, I sent it into, you know, IDW. I sent a couple of pieces into them. You know, to try and get on some covers, you know, because I've been wanting to try. And she was like, hold on. Boop, 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 boop. She made a call. By Monday, I had an email, you know. What? And yeah. So I was like, damn, Sarah, <laughs> I didn't know you had that kind of pool girl. So, you know, so she had, uh, she did it. And, and so I did the first, I did my first cover. It was <laughs> Friends Forever 33. And, um, and Tony wrote that issue, I think, and I drew the cover for it. And so ever since then, I had done retailer incentive covers, the one in 10 cover, because mm -hmm. uh, IDW does that a lot. And mm -hmm. I, did, I did that for years. And then they gave me a shot um, for the free comic book day, 10 pager. I did my first interiors with them. Because um, I hadn't done interior, at least not. I had been working on Stray Dogs at the same time. So it was like, you know, kind mm -hmm. of like I was taking what I learned on Stray Dogs and doing it for this. And mm -hmm. that came out much sooner. And so um, it was for the free comic book day that didn't happen because of COVID. So that book, whenever it turns up, I start freaking out because I didn't have any of that book. Like I never got any of that book um, other than other than when they put it in the omnibus. That was the only way I got that issue mm -hmm. in print yeah. was when they put it in the omnibus and they sent me a copy. But yeah is so cool and then so ever since then you know that's when i met tony tony saw my uh work on a random piece that i had done in memoriam of my old dog who passed away mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. you know that scene in all dogs go to heaven when charlie pops his head up out of the clouds and he's got that halo yeah that's what i drew i drew my dog in that style uh -huh. just like that and that's so that cool. was what got me my job on stray dogs literally that one piece <laughs> You know what's really interesting after I hear your kind of your little um, story there? Mm -hmm. your, um, Mark, I'm going to ask you to hold up on that because we do have to take a little bit of a break. But before I go, um, Drew, is that piece available? Sure. I, asking. I, I mean, if if someone wants it, I I didn't really plan on it. <laughs> like yeah, I said, I show, a, a lot of things sell. But, yeah. You know, if you want to offer it up, you can offer it up. What do you want to do with it? Sure. Um, Fifty bucks is fine. Oh, um, dang. 
All right, there you go, uh, Mike. Yeah, my rep to... is going to kill me, by the way. <laughs> uh, like this is uh, this... somebody place a bid on this so his rep can kill him. <laughs> like I know, I know, Quan is shaking right now uh, in his sleep. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell him. It's okay. Disturbance right. in the force. Okay. He's going right, to wake so up. That. that piece is up uh, at 50. All right, we're going to take a little break, and then when we come back, I'll run. we'll run through those uh, canvases again for, for you. Uh, I'll show you my picture of Snarf when we yes. come back. And we'll do the Snarf thing. <laughs> okay, so we got – okay, I'm just getting this 50 bucks uh, from Mike on the second piece. And Steve, Steve B., you got to tell me which one uh, that is. All right, so on the sixth. Anyway, when we come back, we'll uh, – We'll review everything, All right? So don't go away. We know you probably get a lot of emails, but could you please make sure to sign up for our mailing list? We don't send a lot of emails, and we try not to bother you. We just want to give you the best information about all the cool stuff that's going on around here. Sign up on our website, theexplive.com. So, the show is called The Geek Chat. And really, there's just a couple of geeks. I'm Rich. I'm Dez. And we are your hosts for this weekly guide into comic bookery and all the geeky stuff that goes with it. And that pretty much says it all. They talk about the latest movies and shows. Okay, I'll be completely honest with you. Overall, D-plus movie. So, the end... Did uh, you know who that is? That's that's She-Ra, yeah. Yes. The new number one comics of the week. We rep Sam Samuel Jackson and we rep Mace Windu. I passed on this. <laughs> I was like No regrets. No regrets. I really wanted to like this book. I really, really, <sighs> really, really, really did. Like I really did. And just chat with each other. And with you. Oh, Daniel says I dosed off with the first one. <laughs> I have zero interest in the the Joker Harley ship, not Harley herself. Enjoy nap for me. Yeah, yeah, this movie's gonna be rough for me to sit through, I'll be honest. The Geek Chat, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Just a couple of honest geeks. Let's be honest. Come on. And that is why people watch us, because we're honest. Giving their honest opinions. And the thing you always have to remember about the internet is everyone has an opinion, and they all suck. Part of the experience. There's something for every imagination at your local comic shop. Visit comicshoplocator.com to find a store near you. All right. In a little while, we'll do those uh, giveaways uh, that uh, mm-hmm. we were fortunate to get from Trish and Drew. So don't forget to put in pound sign EXP Thundercats to get in on that. Okay. So currently we have a bid um, on both of um, uh, Drew's pieces and both bids are from Mike. And that just changed because Steve B just placed the $80 on Drew's uh, first piece. <laughs> um, so uh, going quick there from Stevie B. Or they, uh, you will never get that yeah. at a con. I'm so, oh my god, it's so good. That, that, that's what we try telling everybody. The, um, the prices that you pick these pieces up here, yeah, even for me, cheap. Okay. <laughs> They're now you'll that'll never happen, especially if clones mm-hmm. around. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, and we'll run through. Um, I forgot who was asking about the canvases. If you can bring those up again, uh, JD. Fang Fang is not here. She's probably having technical difficulties. So this is the 18 by 12 Shogun Empire, and that is uh, $200. Okay, and just to make it interesting for you guys, on these canvases, we'll take care of the shipping, okay? All right, so the next piece is the uh, Darth Kreia, and that is also 12 by 18 at 200 And we have the Harlequin here, another 12 by 18 for 200 and this is a 12 by 2, 12 by 12, Grogu in the spring who meets his friend. Friend. Yeah. And this <laughs> is the Daniel Moonstar. Uh, samurai. 
Indian mashup. That's a 11 by 14 for 125. And that last piece, the 8x10 Shogun Mo for 100. Okay. And we will uh, take up the shipping on that. Mike, thanks again for that uh, bit of $85 on the first piece for Drew. That's going back. Damn, Drew, okay. you're wanted. Uh oh. You got to show more uh, show more skin now, Drew. Oh, I can. I, I had some. The eyes. It's the eyes on that. Somebody at a signing a couple weeks ago wanted me to. Find their their boob. Oh, yeah, and I was that's like, so you no. know you've made it when you get assigned random body parts. Yeah, I was like, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, I'm you, you're talking to the wrong person. Yeah, I was like, you speak somewhere else, uh, <laughs> and we'll do that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was weird. My son was there too, my 20 year old. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> cringe, yeah. Yeah, we, we we all felt a little weird and out of place together. Did you say don't tell your mom like that or? Oh no, I'm 100% honest with my wife. Oh. Yeah, she can She's... know because I acted appropriately. Oh, like if you have to experience it, the the spouse has to experience it too. You know? Yeah, it's you awful. To... It was awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just have to be like, uh, sorry, if I had to see this, you have to see this now. <laughs> That's the sucky part. <laughs> you know, Trist, that reminds me. <laughs> oh, no. I had a, um art acquaintance. <laughs> For some reason, she wanted to take, like, a professional picture of herself, like, in, like, a see-through nude. Oh, like a boudoir kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I was cringe. I'm like, please don't show it, right? You're like, oh. no. You, know, you didn't have a lot of confidence to do something like that. Exactly. Nah. I suck at yeah. photos because I, I hate my face, but like, you know, I, I think that photography is another art that I'm never going to be good at. Look, so. if she, dude, if she was like looking like Sophie Marceau, okay, right? Oh, that's so cute. Yay, Trish. Yay, Snarf. Oh, I didn't see him. Oh, there he is. Awesome. Snarf is like my favorite Thundercat guy. Give me more snarf. Yeah, let me say it's the kind where you kind of want to forget, you know, the kind of body. So uh, you wish that you didn't see. Yeah, it's like yeah. sometimes you see like, things please. you can't see. What are you going to do with that? Uh, oh, you said you were going to give that away? No, 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 with the snarf? What do you want to do with snarf? that? Yeah. I can include it with this comic. Or do you want to you put it up for auction? No, I mean, I don't. Don't be shy. Oh, uh, all right. Because I, I don't plan on like doing much more else and much else to him besides. How this. could you do that in fifteen like, minutes? Who wants, who wants that from uh, Trish? Anybody? Uh, anybody? Let's see if anybody's interested in that. Snarf, snarf. Make make an offer to Trish. Trish. Make her oh. feel good tonight. Oh no! Someone's coming after me. Uh oh! They're after. They're after <laughs> us because. Uh, they, they caught me. Uh, boudoir pictures. Yeah, they got me. I wasn't supposed to say it. That's your friend. Mm, acquaintance. How dare you tell my secrets? It's not my friend, acquaintance. Oh, acquaintance. So it's more awkward. Like, oh, please. Oh, yeah. That that now. See, if you didn't know that person, I also yeah. have this kind of older piece that I did as a sketch. <gasps> it was uh, Baloo dressed as a uh, bombshell Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> because you know so why not cute oh what's his name um the guy who did all the bombshell stuff ants right and um god i forgot his name he's gonna be at c2e2 dc bombshells is like my one of my favorite things because that yeah. again that's another era of like art like that classic like vintage pinup style yeah yeah kind of like just everything for me well I've always loved the bombshell uh, art where it came from. So mm -hmm. when I saw that uh, being brought in, I thought that was so, so cool. So I yeah, really like that. Yeah, we and then I was on some <clears throat> show where they were like, oh, you know, I was, on a, I was on one of those SketchUp shows where they're, you know, I'm sitting and talking and other people are, it was a cover battle. That's what it was. Two people were doing covers in different styles and they had to battle each other. Yeah. So, like, it was basically like a... a yeah, the panel voted 
at the end to determine a winner, and then they yeah. like took votes from the chat, which I thought was great. Um, and they they would pick an art style, so like they would pick like impressionism. So you'd have to draw an impressionistic version of some superhero, you know, instant. Oh wow, that's interesting. Or and then, did like, they give a deadline, like a time, like twenty minutes or something? Through, uh, through the um, whatever the the time period was on the show, like they had like an hour to oh. do the whole piece. And if oh my you could get the color, great. If you couldn't get the color, that's fine too, because that yeah. wasn't like always like the jam. But like somebody mm. had Deadpool, and it was like cubism, and I'm like, that's perfect, <laughs> you know, like because mm. you could just feature it. Or like, um, yeah. It's somebody yeah. else had Doctor Doom and like impressionism, oh, and that one's a little harder. But yeah. like, you know, I love oh, just somebody yeah. wants to buy Baloo. He's just nice. been sitting here. He's just been there sitting here. Aww, I don't know cute. what I would want for him. I don't know what I would want for him. I'll make, let you guys. If you want Baloo, make an offer for it. She doesn't know. Nine million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me get my hairless cat out here to talk about $1 million. Mm. <laughs> I don't have a hairless cat, Mr. Bigglesworth. I, I do have to sign it, though. Because, like, yeah. You know, oh. I did this one in, like, 20 minutes or whatever on that show. $100 oh, for Baloo from Ilya. What? <laughs> Thank you for that, Ilya. Aw. Trish, you deserve it. Oh, You're yeah, giving it up for free. Ilya, uh, oh. thank you for that. Uh, and, um, Mm. There you go. Well, right. they're asking you like for accuracy. You gotta make the face. The face. Like, when you get angry at the full moon, during the full moon. Oh. Um. Yeah, we have to do a side by side. <laughs> yeah, side by side comparison. But I'll definitely like I'll I'll definitely sign this and maybe throw some throw a little bit more shading and stuff on him. So cool. There you go. My nice my good job. markers are out in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Northeast love. Love that. Oh. I can't um we're not actually next to each other, uh Stevie B. She's actually in another room. No, uh, the me. screen. Oh. Your screen is next to mine. Oh we're actually, you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, the camera's just pointed at the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would have been nice. Yeah. I uh, see. I my my office is a mess right now because I've been in between shows, so I have boxes everywhere. Mm. Um. Whoa. Oh. Okay. I gotta ask then, Drew. Yeah. Are you a messy artist? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. Please tell. Um. I clean my studio just so I can front like I'm organized. Mm. So, <laughs> on this mm -hmm. thing. So if you look behind me, this is as organized as it gets. It was a total <laughs> mess this morning. I uh, definitely you can't really that. see it because it's all small. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I told a friend of mine today, I was like, yeah, I'm going to front like I'm super, super organized. But mm -hmm. in all actuality, yeah, I, I, this whole office was a disaster this morning. Wild um, chaos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like you, I was with all the signings and and shows and stuff yeah. it, it's like i had boxes everywhere yeah. and plus i'm sure and, you have piles of comps and stuff you know i don't yeah. it's dynamite so i have tons of comps um look at that it's going nice uh um but not dynamite only gives me like six or seven yeah, I was just saying, what do they give you like 10 um, i always ask for more though mm. Um, like I email, uh, what's his name, Rick, and I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> I just want them to send me blanks. Literally, I just want yeah. them to send me blanks. Like I don't care about like I get my copies of whatever yeah. I, you know, whatever I draw for them. That's fine because hmm. they'll show up at a store or you know somebody will show up with it to me. I don't necessarily need a hundred copies of you know Darkwing Duck number one. Yeah. But what I do want are you know any white blanks that they have color I blanks are the always at shows yeah uh, all right so we have somebody that wants to look at that chitara card one more time uh oh, oh, okay yeah, okay card. guys yeah. this is a work in progress right so it's not yeah. finished but Still, this is what it looks like 
Still but looking for the, a fifty dollar bid on that. This for is a video of authenticity. So even my name and everything is uh, printed, and it has a serial number. And then when you get it, you can like hover your phone over this barcode, and you see a video of me like the progress and me signing it. Like it's the CGC. Cool, it's like kind of looking into like a TikTok where it kind of you know yeah. shows the the yeah. work in progress. Yeah. That's kind right. of neat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are looking for a bid of uh, fifty dollars on that. Uh, Mugs Galant has a bid of fifty from Stevie B. Drew's uh, uh, Chitara has a bid of eighty-five from Micah Asbill, yeah. and he's got a bid of eighty dollars on the second piece as well. Mm. And Trish's uh, the snark. Which I forget which one it was again. Snark. Baloo. Baloo. Baloo, Baloo. 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 has a okay. hundred on it. Baloo and... has a hundred dollar bid from uh, Ilya on that. Mm -hmm. Mike claimed the Shogun Empire and the Grogu. Uh, thank you again now for that. So Grogu. we're going to go ahead and you still have a little time, but if you can put in pound sign, EXP, Thundercats, we're going to do these uh, giveaways. And the first <laughs> up is... Uh, With the covers, does one person get both? Or are we giving them individually? Let's give them, let's give them uh, individually, separate. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So let's do... Can I enter? Just kidding. Yes, <laughs> just just do yeah. the pseudo name. Yeah, yeah, you can. Right. All right. So okay. the first one we're gonna do is um, let's do the uh, black and white, and th these are this Whoa. this was chrome again. They're metal, right? I want that. Yeah, they're metal. These are metal. They're not guys. metal. Foil. They're foil, they're not metal. metal. Yeah, they're they're foil. Okay, so these are oh, very special. Metal. Holy crap! Limited to two hundred. Oh yeah. God. He's only got I a few of these left. Okay. Oh, mine always so hot. That red pops up. That yeah. red is showing Ooh, up. Much. Yeah, it, that, that has some depth to it. I love Lionel. All right, so we're going to roll for the black and white version mm -hmm. first. Yeah, See who gets that. Ooh, and that. on the back. Foil covers. See, foil covers and me were kind of like you know, not always simpatico. <laughs> Well, I, I love the black and white one. Yeah. That's my All right. So now, uh, congratulations to Steve on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you'll be sure to get that there. And now let's do the man's vest from. Um, oh, uh, yeah. From man's Chris. vest. Oh. I got to sign the it. Next, uh, giveaway. Okay. Oh, sure. international oh. shipping is. um. Do we cover the international? No. Yeah. She, yeah. Oh. Uh, Steve's going to have to pay the international shipping on that. Mm. Man's uh, best right here. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. and this poor little Pretty robot cool. leg on this dog, so cute. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Oh, oh. Ah. yay! Good job. Right, Very good on that. And our last giveaway. Another chrome Thundercats number one in color. <gasps> Here we go. Roll it, JD. Can, can I throw my name in? <laughs> oh my God. Please. Can I win? Please. Dog. Oh, Stevie. Stevie. You lucky dog. You. <laughs> Stevie, you deserve it. Good win, uh, good win. All right, okay. I want to thank you guys uh, for participating uh, uh, in that. Okay, let us know if there's anything else that you want to see before we go. We've got like a couple more minutes left. Uh, be sure to tune in next week when we will have uh, Todd Rayner with us. Uh, he's got an active campaign, uh, Annabelle. If you haven't seen that, uh, go ahead and uh, check that out. Uh, Fun Fun will hopefully be here uh, this time, and we have uh, Connie Jolitz yeah. that will be uh, joining us uh, as well uh, next week. So tune in it's, for that. It's the internet. Her, I think it's her internet. Yeah, it's her. It's the internet. Yeah. Like where she's. It's not at. the equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All yeah. right, and be sure to check yeah. out our, our artists' our websites that we've posted in, in the comments. Mm -hmm. Give them some love, love back. Yeah, my streak of wins is over. GG to. Okay. Yeah. Derek, okay, Derek Neiman places 120 on Baloo. All right. <laughs> Way to Derek. go. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then I, 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 I love our, our I love our audience here. Mm -hmm. It was great. 
Yeah, look at the loop. That was so uh, cool. Derek. Let me get that down here. Don't forget to fill out the uh, magic form. That way we know where uh, everything is going to. You know, I got it recorded, but it's always good to uh, get that verified. Plus, we have that gives all our information on how to contact you. Wow, that's Thank funny. Speaking yes. of metal, Trish, have you heard the various heavy metal bands on YouTube making songs devoted to My Little Pony? Yes. There's actually, like, the, in the My Little Pony fandom, right, you wouldn't think that it would be huge, but it's absolutely huge. Um, I'm actually going to a My Little Pony convention in August. Um for like the first time since 2019 but um they do concerts at these things where they'll have dj <laughs> sets they have like original music that they make uh you know it's wild it's wild they know how to party one of the party cons they had to change the slogan to don't jump because people were jumping so much that it was shaking the convention center floor on the what? second floor yeah, they had to wow. tell them, don't jump because you're going to go through the floor into the basement here. Like, stop jumping. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> anyway, we are all out of time. I want to thank uh, Trish and Drew for uh, joining us. We definitely want to have you guys back again. Yeah, sorry, Drew. It was Drew. a barrel of uh, fun. Uh, one final yeah. note, I want to leave you guys uh, tonight, okay? Sure, Do so something good, good every day. Help somebody out, okay? Let's mm -hmm. increase the positive energy around us. There's enough negativity as it is. Let's mm -hmm. change that, though. Thank you guys again for being with us. Good night. Sweet. Bye-bye. What do you call the place on Spider-Man's wrists where the webs come out? His website. I hate myself for writing that joke, but you'd make me feel so much better if you just visited our website. We have links to our merch, new release lists, all the show info, and so much more. TheExplive.com.